Hi folks, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of Jazz Piano Fundamentals, book three, book two, and oh, I don't know where book one is. Oh well, but I, there is a book one, I promise. It'd be crazy to have book two and book three with no book one. I'm also the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano, and we're gonna be talking primarily about solo piano today. I've been doing digging into a lot of Bill Evans um, and thinking about inner voice movements. And so I, I made a little PDF uh, describing some different inner voice movements that I hear in Bill Evans and that I think are useful to think about. And I love inner voice movements because it's one of those things that gets us from thinking about chords as this just like stack of notes to these living, breathing things that we can manipulate in different ways. So let's dive in. Um, for each of these kind of categories, I've just done two examples, uh, two with G minor seven, two with C seven. Uh, they're not supposed to really be connected. It just, uh, I just decided on those two chords kind of randomly. Um, and I, I made a few different categories of inner voice movements that we might have. So the first one is leading up to a chord tone, right? So notice that what's kind of unique here is that there's not a chord on the downbeat. And we don't actually get our you know, real true chord until beat three. Now, almost every part of the chord stays the same, but in each case, we have notes um, that are targeting a chord tone. So in this first example, we're targeting the seventh. Notice that the notes are, uh, that the, the line is moving in octaves, right? One melody in the, uh, in the right hand, one melody in the left hand, and it's going, just leading to that F. So and that's all we're doing is uh, we're creating a little bit of color um, moving into that final chord. Second example, we're also moving into F, not because it's the only note that you can move into. I just kind of enjoyed it. Um, and here it's, we're starting again from a dissonant place, right? If we start from a dissonant place, then it's gonna be more colorful than if we start from just a, another chord tone. So here. Right, this is very Bill Evans to me. Um, introducing this dissonance that has a real purpose. And then on C7, again, I'm, I'm starting from the most dissonant places I can imagine. Um, and so on C7, that means it's the fourth and the seventh. So. Okay, so the melody is targeting here the flat 13th, right? On a dominant chord, we can target altered chord, altered tones like this. And it's just moving in by half steps. And then same thing, the major starting on the major seventh, starting in an unstable dissonance place, moving in by half steps. Really cool sound. That's probably enough for a whole video, <laughs> but we're not done. Not here, not on this channel, which overloads you with information. Um, okay, so in our first example, in our first set of examples, we were starting from an unstable place and then moving into a stable place. We could also just connect between two notes in the same chord. So kind of between two stable places. So in these examples here, I'm just connecting between the seventh and the fifth, but in between, we've got some instability, particularly that E flat, right? And this is nice in octaves as well. Now, let me just show you that um, for Bill Evans and some others, this is often connected to drop two voicings. Like he'll play, these are drop two voicings. And then in the left hand. And if you add in the, the root underneath that, you get a very similar effect. So. You know, this could be thought of as, as a single voicing with this connection in between, or it could be thought of as drop two voicings. Okay, so here in this C7 example, 
I'm connecting between the ninth and the seventh. And notice it's it's nice in this case to put to put in an inversion. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to get the third anywhere. I don't know how I would do it, honestly. I don't know how I would reach those top notes. So I do like putting it in inversion. Um, so here's an example of doing two uh, inner lines at once, right? The top one moving from the ninth to the seventh, the bottom one moving from the seventh to the fifth. All right, third category is actually changing the chord, right? In these first two examples, the chords really remain the same, but we could change kind of a detail about the chord. For, for instance, whether it's a seventh chord or a sixth chord, or whether it has the ninth or is just a triad, or in dominant chords, changing between two different alterations, or from a non-altered chord to an altered chord, right? These kind of color changes that don't completely change the, the quality of the chord. So, right, this changes it from a minor seventh to a minor sixth chord. Second example goes from having the ninth to not having the ninth. Subtle change. And then on our dominant chords here, we're going from having a sharp nine to having a flat nine. And we're moving between the natural nine in between. Right. And then on the next measure, flat 13 to a flat 5. And you know, I think I mentioned this, this could also be moving from a natural note to an altered note. Okay, next category, connecting between two notes of different chords, right? These inner voices don't have to just be right in the same chord all the time. It could be moving between chords. So here's an example moving from G minor 7 to C7 where we're moving from the fifth of the G minor to the sharp 11th of the C7. Right? I could imagine going down. I think that's what the next example is. I don't have to imagine. Oh. Okay, so here we're connecting between the ninth of the G minor 7 and the third of the C7. I was going to say here, I could imagine going down A, A flat, G, and moving that same F sharp again. We're going to talk in just a second about how to dress up some of these lines, but you're getting the concept. Um, and then adding a tense note, right? Adding something outside of the chord, resolving it into the chord. Um, so. flat six moving to to the fifth the major seventh not part of the chord moving to the minor seventh i do that all the time or it could be a classic suspension like the fourth to the third major seventh moving to minor seventh and the fourth moving to the third So those are some ways that you can introduce these inner lines. It's nothing revolutionary. You don't have to be a genius. You just need to be looking at the different components of the chord and seeing how you can move. Now, if you want to sound more like somebody like Bill Evans, not only are you going to move these inner lines quite often, I'll add, but you're going to ornament them. And I've made a little, uh, a few diagrams of some easy quote unquote ornamentations. Um, so I think we've talked a lot kind of about making a chromatic connection of filling in any half steps. You know, instead of just doing that, I'll let you see exactly what I'm playing. So we're moving the A to the G, but we're going through that A flat. 
The next one is a lower neighbor, right? So we're kind of forming an enclosure. Dipping below the target note. Pretty common if you've studied jazz. We can also kind of go out of our way. And then come back in. We could do two lower neighbors instead of just one. We could do the step in the other direction plus a lower neighbor. We could do step in the other direction plus two lower neighbors. repetition of the original note and then I think this one's got like all the stuff in it of course you've got to make it all work with the chord and the voicing um, but you know a lot of what you might take what one might take as like complex inner voice movement is actually more in the ornamentation than the movement so let me uh, get out a chart for days of wine and roses um, I was thinking about that because I was listening to the Bill Evans, Tony Bennett version. Um, and let's try to find some ways. Oh, I guess in the other room. Uh, let's try to find some ways where we're going to ornament each of these chords um, with some inner voice movement. And this is really, this is going great. I hope you're enjoying me fumbling around with my Kindle app. Um, it is nice to have all these real books on there though. Oh, it's not even on here. Oh, no. All right, I'm going to choose another tune then. That's embarrassing. Let's do Come Rain or Come Shine, another tune uh, very highly associated with Bill Evans. Aren't they all? So, okay, so there's our F major. You know, we could come up with a voicing of whatever sort we want. So the melody's on the third. That means that we've got this nice, and the melody doesn't move at all. Let's use our very first. Our very first method of, you know, leaving the chord open. And then I'm aiming for the sixth, and I'm aiming by a half step. because we also get to hear the fifth. So whenever we have a 2-5, it's always so nice to connect the seventh of the minor chord to the third of the dominant chord. So here I'm going to use that device of connecting between chords. And I'm just going to focus on these two notes, but I'm going to do a nice ornament. from A7 to D minor. Um, duh, I'm gonna connect between this third. I'm gonna make it a D minor sixth because I'm just cool like that. And I'm gonna connect using the minor seven. So here they've kind of given us a little inner voice movement G13 to G7 sharp 5 to G minor to C7 flat 9 is really da, 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 da. like that's right there for the taking. Um, so let's ornament it a little bit. Now, 
I gotta say that there's taste is important here, right? Would I do all this while I'm playing the melody? Like if it ever comes at the expense of the phrasing of the melody? Like, no, not necessarily. There are ways to make voices move that aren't gonna disrupt the melody, but you don't wanna do too much while the melody's playing. Okay, so just because I'm demonstrating all of this doesn't mean that I would actually necessarily do all of it in performance. I just wanna be clear about that. Okay, but with that said. introduce that tension of the major seven and resolve it. bigger. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, a lot of this sort of thing is covered in ballad chapters. Uh, there's four chapters about ballad playing and playing solo jazz piano. Um, you might really enjoy that. Uh, I'm going to do my best to make a link to the PDF that I've got. Um, and thanks for watching. If you watched this far, say something about the word inner. All right, we're talking about inner voices. So say something about your inner life. <laughs> All right, bye-bye.